on these things. Oh, I bet. Oh, hello, everybody. I'm so glad to be here today. Um, we are talking blog monetization, and um, I'm going to introduce you to the folks that are here with me in just a minute. But the cool thing is, is um, Lori Turk and I have been doing these hangouts every Wednesday morning, talking about Google Plus and SEO. But a lot of the questions we have often surrounds blog monetization. And so I thought it would be really cool to start a really basic conversation today that we can build on in the future about what we're doing to make money from our blogs. And Lori, unfortunately, who is like the guru of blog monetization, couldn't be here today because she's having a little difficulty with Tip Junkie, which needs to be up 24 hours a day because it's just that fabulous. So anyway, she'll catch us next week, and um, which is good because we will build on this in a little bit in the future. So let me. T I'm Holly Homer, and. Um, I have several blogs. Uh, June Cleaver Nirvana is my personal blog, and Kids Activities blog is all about fun things to do with their kids. But I also run Business to Blogger, which is a network for um, matching bloggers with companies that need bloggers. And so um, not only do we create um, sponsored post opportunities, review opportunities over there, but we run an affiliate network as well. So that's kind of my background. I monetize on my other blogs, and then I run an affiliate program for another company. And um, let's talk, start with Kathy, and you can tell us a little bit about what you do and how you've been monetizing. Okay, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Kathy James. I'm from the UK, um, and I write the kids' activities blog that's called nurturestore.co.uk. Um, I've been blogging for three years, um, and I write freelance now as well for another number of other blogs. I write for Baby Center in the UK. And I write for Holly's blog, uh, Kids Activities blog in the States. Um, <laughs> yay. Um, and I've been monetizing my blog pretty much from the first six months um, from when I first started blogging. And now blogging and freelance writing um, is my job, it's my profession. That's great, and I love hearing when people can turn you know this into something that actually is creating income for you and your family, and mm -hmm. turning a hobby into into a job. And hopefully, it's still fun when you do it that way. Sure. And then I thought it would be fun to um, invite Mac Cherry um, today because he has a completely different perspective of this because he's not a blogger, but he runs. Not an affiliate network, but something similar. So let me have him introduce himself and tell you a little bit about that. Hi, everybody. I'm Matt Cherry with TimeDog.com, and we are a personal daily virtual assistant service for busy, busy women. And we're a brand, obviously, so I'm happy to represent the brands on this side. Well, we do have a blog incorporated into our company website, but um, I'm glad to be here with Holly because we spent about a year traveling um, to conferences, meeting professional women bloggers face to face, and really asking them, now that the industry has been alive and thriving for seven to ten years, and there's a little bit of track record and history behind it, how would they really um, view the best relationships that they could have in a profitable way, but also in a... Um, personal way with working with brands going on into the future. And if everyone's still aware of, m lots of relationships still are very short term and project based. And so we just took our time to research and learn from bloggers so we could develop a more of a long term um, plan to promote our company 100% through professional women bloggers. And I, that's one of the reasons why I wanted you here today because um, I know as a blogger, you know, it's a lot of work dealing with people, you know, dealing and knowing what people want and that kind of stuff. And the short term relationships are often very, very time consuming. And so if it's something that could be a longer term relationship, I think it's beneficial to, for both the brand and the blogger. So thanks, Matt. Um, and so, um, Kathy, like, wh what I wanted to start with was kind of. Um, how you got started into monetization, I know that you started like day one, which is kind of unusual in this space. Um, a lot of times people start it, I know I started it as kind of a scrapbook and it, was, it wasn't until year one or year one and a half that I was like, oh, maybe I can make a little bit of money from this. So why don't you take us through like wh where you started that and, and what kind of results you got? Okay, um, I'm in the UK, which I think is quite significant in terms of me starting quite early on the monetization because the UK of course is much smaller than the States 
Um, so it's much easier for bloggers and brands to link up, I think, because you're in a smaller pool of people. Um, so three years ago when I started blogging, the UK had just started hosting parenting blog conferences. Um, so a lot of brands were getting on board, sponsoring the conference, and then looking to sponsor bloggers to attend the conference and to represent them as an ambassador. And that's how I first began um, on the monetization because I was paired up with a brand to represent at a blog conference. Um, and then things have just, you know, continued from there. So when you were talking about that, is that were you um, as a, like a blog ambassador or like a sponsored post, or were they sponsoring advertising on your um, page? How, did, how was, did that look? Okay, it was kind of a package, really. Um, so they sponsored me to go to the conference um, and to represent them at the conference, um, but they also had um, an ad placed on in the sidebar of my blog to you know to show the ambassadorship, and then I also did some sponsored posts. Um, before the conference, hosting a giveaway of some of their products. Very so interesting. Yeah. yeah, so it was a package, really. Yeah, I think that's really interesting because I think a lot of us start with um, kind of like the really low generation. Um, I know that I started with um, Google AdSense, but my traffic that when I inserted Google mm. AdSense was really, really low. Yeah. And three or four years ago, um, it wasn't nearly as um, savvy about picking advertisements for my site. I, rem I eventually took it off uh, my personal blog, June Cleaver Nirvana, because I had talked about some potty training issues, and then they had parked a toilet, like toilets for sale on my sidebar for like yeah. three months because obviously people potty training want to buy toilets. Um, and so, uh, but I want to br bring it around full circle because now on Kids Activities Blog, we do use Google AdSense, and it's our largest generation of income because they're a lot more savvy about choosing the correct, um, not putting toilets next to potty training, you know, more like um, educational information for parents. They're doing a lot better about the targeting. And so a simple addition of just an AdSense code to a sidebar, if you have um, a decent amount of traffic, can passively bring in income that you don't have to work for outside of that. Um, do you do any net, um, ad ne network, um, Kathy? Yeah, I do. I use AdSense, and I really like it as well. Like you say, it's just passive. It's so easy to set up. I think as a parent and as a blogger, you've got enough to do looking after your kids and producing your blog. So if you can streamline any other area of it, then that's great. And that's what AdSense really does. It makes it very easy um, for you to monetize your blog. And as you say, if you've got a blog that's getting a lot of traffic, AdSense can work really well. Um, I also work with um, an ad agency who are based in London called Handpick Media. And they do a similar kind of thing um, as AdSense. They have a permanent ad block um, on my site, and then they deliver advertising um, into there for me. So again, it's hands-off from my point of view. I can concentrate on the blog content um, and let AdSense and Handpicked um, deliver the ads to the site for me. Yeah, and I, I really encourage, um, even if you don't have massive amounts of traffic, mm -hmm. but you're building, you might as well go ahead and add some of these ad codes. They're super simple. You add them just like you would a blog button to the side of your blog. And, um, you know, like signing up for AdSense, I think, would take a whole three and a half minutes. Mm -hmm. And then you have it there. So if you do have something that hits really big on Pinterest or you have, like, something that goes viral or a, a really popular post that you get on the front page of Google for, is it's there. You don't have to think about it. And I love just getting a check without, like, filling out an invoice or anything like that. So, yeah, um, yeah I think that... Absolutely right. You may as well put them on there. And like you say, if you suddenly get a big spike in traffic, then you can just sit back you know, and enjoy the ad income that you get from it. I do think um, a lot of mum bloggers that I talk to um, are almost reluctant to put the advertising on there or perhaps feel there's a question about whether they should make money from their blog or not. Um, and I think, why not? You know, you might make enough to cover your hosting, your other expenses, and like you say, if you get a big spike on Pinterest, you know, you can really get a boost from AdSense. I know, and I guess it's it's hard for me to um, understand, you know, when people are, are like, well, you know, I, I don't, it's, it will change my voice. 
I don't know. Like, I don't see how an, like a code in your sidebar is going to change your voice at all. Yeah. But um, I don't know. Like, I I think it's all about um, maximizing what we're doing. You know, like if I mean, if it's going to change your voice, then yeah, you probably shouldn't do it. But if it's something that's gonna you're going to make money from, whether you you know. But with what you're already doing, I think it's such a cool thing. Mm -hmm. um, I, can, I can add an interesting perspective on that too, Holly, if you don't mind. Um, I've noticed a new trend coming from the brand side when we talk with existing networks or we talk with bloggers individually. Um, there's an evolution of blogging usually um, from the people we've researched and we've talked to thousands of bloggers there's some of an evolution of you know you start off as a writer and you start off with a passion and then at some point in time you you choose to begin to monetize as Kathy said some people are a, a little on both sides of the fence with it well what does it make my blog appear to be well here's something new that I've seen and this is happening from the large networks that are recruiting bloggers to be in their network so that when they get project work and um, offers from Fortune 500 companies to say we need 2,000 bloggers to review this product with school-aged children and I've seen some of the criteria for joining the networks been um, updated recently to say you can only have a certain amount of advertising on your site to participate in our network so that even the networks are starting to dictate some of the rules of we don't want your site to look like a NASCAR with stickers all over it We'd rather it be clean and pure and have a new like Web 3.0 design to it with very few representations of an Amazon pay-per-click or a, you know, other products like that. So that's interesting and it also, you know, sends mixed messages to newer bloggers versus veteran bloggers. Right. And I do, because one of the things I do at Business Blogger is I've been running blogger campaigns for several years or choosing bloggers to, you know, to to you know for sponsor posts or or ambassador and um, ambassadorships and that kind of stuff, and I will like it is true like there are blogs out there that are flashing and clicking and you know all craziness and it is it's it's all oftentimes a shame because it's a really quality blog that has quality content, but what they're telling the reader when they they come is all I care about is making money from this and what I've found in my own um, blog and I'm sure Kathy can speak to this a little bit too is it's really about choosing the best fits for your blog and I think it's okay to have three or four ads but maybe 30 would be too many um, and so you don't want to overwhelm your reader because it's not about the ads um, the cool thing about blogging is it's about the content and then the people come for the content but hey you know often what's in the sidebar is something that's you know a good match for you because we chose it um, Kathy what do you what do you think about um, you know the level of, of monetization on a blog okay I think that a good design and a good layout of a blog can make a huge difference um, to the look and to the feel of it um, I think on kids activities blog and on nurture store we combine the advertising with the content really well from a design point of view um, I think that it is the content that's the most important thing and that's what readers come for um, and we make no charge for our ideas, for our resources, for the things that we put on the blog and I think because we're making no charge for that it's perfectly okay to include some advertising on the site and to make some revenue from that point of view. But I also think it's super important to be very careful, particularly for sponsored posts or ambassadorships or giveaways, those kind of things, is to really choose carefully um, what you're deciding to take on and to put on your blog. So always make sure that any sponsored posts that you're doing are something that your readers will actually be interested in reading about, you know, participating in, that is going to be of interest to your readers. And I think you really can do that. Um, you know, monetize it from your point of view, but still keep things really interesting and really useful for your readers. I completely agree with that. In fact, um, it's something that, um, and like on Kids Activities blog, we only publish Kids Activities. So if you're a sponsor that wants me to run a giveaway, no, it's not a Kids Activities. Um, and that's really helped me um, focus what we're what what good fit is with a sponsorship. 
But it also, the funny thing I've found is that some of my very favorite posts I've ever written were sponsored posts, and I think it's because I really was thoughtful about it, and I put it together in a really good package, and I was really proud of it. I probably spent more time on it than I would have normally, because I really wanted that, I wanted to be super careful for the fit. Um, and so I think if you can look at it as more of a writing prompt, like only choosing um, sponsorships that would be more of a writing prompt and really be an extension of your brand, you're going to have a better result with that anyway. So um, let's talk a little bit about, um, I, ha I hate to call this affiliate networking because I know there's a stigma to that, but basically, you know, it's only, it's kind of a cool thing because you can be paid per performance um, on some ads. And um, I know I, I'll tell, let Matt talk a little bit about what they came up with for Time Dog, and then um, we can talk about a little bit of what we've been doing um, on our blogs. Go ahead, Matt. Well, unlike traditional paper clicks or paper conversion programs, the feedback we received um, helped us to. Uh, tailor a program that bloggers were just shouting at us they wanted and that was um, we are going to do our normal social media efforts to help a brand and, and boost the click-throughs we're going to um, support you and do what you're requiring of us and also because we're compensating you for it um, but we actually set up more of a traditional network plan where bloggers can actually get overrides by registering and, and recruiting other bloggers to work with them as well. So instead of a traditional affiliate program that's m mostly from our research driven by pay-per-clicks or pass-throughs or conversions, um, we've, we've been told that many of those programs are also complicated and it's hard to track you know pennies and nickels and clicks and tears and things like that so we tried to make our plan as simple as possible and so as an ambassador for time dog if you're a time dog champion we play a very simple flat fee basis so it's X amount of dollars per person when they sign up for our virtual assistant service and if you happen to have a network of bloggers and you recruit 10 more bloggers to work with you, then you can get a flat fee um, percentage or a flat fee dollar amount off of their efforts. And the efforts are still the same criteria as you would do with any other brand ambassador program. Um, as far as we'd like you to use our service so that you can actually speak passionately to it and be a fan of it and then um, just distribute your experience through your normal social media channels and your normal work. So we try well, to keep the minimum work level but with the maximum compensation back. Right, and I think what's really unique about your product is it is a subscription service so I'm sending you people to sign up but my check doesn't just come from the one month. Like it goes on if the people continue right. to be part of the subscription. So I think that's a really unique and beautiful way to have a long term relationship with a company because it's not all about the quick sale and then the blogger um, is gone. And and I'd love to highlight that I think we're one of the few companies that actually crafted a two year agreement contract with our ambassadors and it was funny because only one person asked I don't know that I can commit to you the brand for two years and I said no no it's just the opposite we're trying to show you that brands will commit to you with support communication feedback ongoing education and training to um, support you for two years we hope you stay with us we're here to earn your respect in your business Right, and I, that's one of the reasons why I want Matt to come on today because I think I love to see kind of what the future holds in some of this, and I think what they put together is really clever. Um, Kathy, what kind of do you do any affiliate marketing, and what does that look like for you? No, actually, I don't. I have standard advertising um, and sponsored posts, um, but as a blogger, I haven't really used. Um, affiliates at all. I have used them myself because earlier in the year I published an ebook uh, called The Garden Classroom, which is full of kids' activities associated with gardening and outdoor play. And I have a number of bloggers who are acting as affiliates for sales of that ebook. Um, but as a what, blogger what on my company side. Did you, what company did you use for that, by the way? I'm using eJunkie. Um, you know, setting up, setting up the ad sales for that, and then the bloggers link, link in through eJunkie and can promote the book how they wish on their site, um, which has been working really well, actually. Um, you know, it's all 
automated. It's very easy from the affiliate's point of view and from my point of view. And I think the, you know, the service gets delivered very well from the purchaser's point of view as well. And you sell other things besides just the ebook, is that correct? No, no, just the ebook. Just the ebook, okay. Yeah. And because I know that's something that a lot of people have been um, talking about recently is creating products like mm -hmm. ebooks and that kind of stuff that can be downloaded and sold from the site, you know, utilizing, um, you know, the sphere of influence that we already have on these sites. Yeah. Um, I know for um, us, um, I also run a local website called She is Dallas, and so we were affiliate advertisers for deals of the day and that type of thing, especially when that was really popular a year or so ago. And so we would make, um, you know, on a really good deal, I'd sell 50, and, you know, make a, make a percentage. On a really bad day, I'd sell, you know, nothing or one. And um, so it was kind of a roller coaster, and I really learned that it's all about the product and not necessarily, um, you know, the percentage and that kind of stuff. So I'm really, a lot, you know, I spend my time choosing products more than, um, than actually, you know, signing up for affiliate networks. But I will say um, one of the things that you can look into when you, if you decide to do some affiliate marketing, I think it's a really cool thing to do if you have, um, like for instance, on June Cleaver Nirvana a few years ago, I wrote a post about pajama jeans, and that was way before pajama jeans got popular. And so I was on the front page of Google for pajama jeans, and then pajama jeans <laughs> totally like took off, and you know I was getting a uh, hundred thousand <laughs> hits on my pajama jean. Um, article and so what happened was I ended up getting affiliate advertisement for the actual pajama jean um, um, and putting it at the bottom of just that post because You're that's such what a trendsetter. I know, I know. <laughs> the funny thing was is that it wasn't even a positive review but I so I finally said well if people are still gonna buy them after they read my review <laughs> then I totally need to make money off of them. <laughs> so, and I was selling you know 10, 15 pairs of pajama jeans a day um, <laughs> during the holiday season and it, it completely it completely um, you know, created money that I could put into kids' activities blogs. So <laughs> my next project. But um, so I think if you have like if you're on if you can find a really good fit for a popular post, you don't have to have that advertisement on every single page of your mm -hmm. um, blog. You, I mean, just put the ad into the bottom of the post that it makes the most sense. And so if you have something that's hot on Pinterest right now, find something that kind of goes along with it. And just stick that code in, and you you know, it can't hurt at this point, and it doesn't take away from the look of your site and um or that kind of thing. Holly, I have a question for you for newer bloggers. Um, many of them would be unex inexperienced at where to find if something got popular from their Pinterest board or their blog post. They don't know how to approach a brand or a reseller to get an affiliate code or link or ad or even text link to put at the bottom of their post or on their home page. So where would they begin that search? I think there's really two ways that, um, in fact, the, the funny thing is the pajama jean people found me because I was on the front page of, page of Google and they saw how many people were. Um, so that was an easy one for me and that was my kind of my first foray into um, affiliate marketing. But one of the things is stick with what you know. So like I purchase a lot on Amazon and so I'm an Amazon affiliate because it's something that you can find anything on there. And the cool thing about Amazon is um, is it the if somebody clicks through there's a cookie that's left in their computer for I think three weeks. So it's a really cool thing to put in over the holiday season because you're going to get credit for whatever they buy on Amazon after they click through on your link. So I had last year I had someone buy a television, you know, and I didn't refer the television. I probably referred them to a book or something, but because they made that purchase on Amazon within that cookie period, it went in, in it's not super high. It's like 4% you begin on Amazon and you can work up to 7% per month um, depending on your sales. But that's a really simple way to start and it's really an easy program where you can just go grab code. You put in what you want and they give you the code and you can just go pop it in and it'll take you three minutes. Um, and so that's something you, I would start with, what you know. Have you found the same experience as the statistics show that text links generate 70 to 80 percent more click-throughs for your affiliate programs versus badges and ads? 
I definitely think um, anytime you can weave the product or the sponsor into your story versus isolating them in a box mm -hmm. somewhere, it's way better. So like, um, for instance, we just did um, a sponsored post this week on Kids Activities blog for a World Fest here in Addison, Texas. We think, well, how many people are in Addison, Texas that read the blog? But I know that about 10,000 people do, so it's a good fit for us. But the post was all about crafts to explore, you know, other cultures. And so that World Fest, um, you know, the whole was weaved throughout the whole entire story and then at the bottom was like oh and if you happen to be in Texas you know in two weeks this is what's happening and so that's gonna get a lot more traffic than if we had just put the World Fest you know badge in our sidebar and um, and I love it when it becomes part of the story because it and that's really how our lives are is all the stuff that we use as part of our life it's not just a badge we you know we don't walk around with sponsorship on our t-shirts in real life <laughs> So I think that's a really good question. Um, let's kind of wrap this up with um, Kathy. If each of you could kind of give um, bloggers who are just getting started in this um, some advice, um, Matt, from the um, from the you know kind of what you're looking for category, and Kathy, like what's been successful for you, like mm -hmm. how to get started and um, and take it from there. Go ahead, Kathy. Okay, um, I would say um, to bloggers to put together some kind of media kit. Um, that talks a bit about what your blog is about, what social media channels you've got, what kind of traffic you have, and then when you're getting any kind of inquiries coming in from brands, or if there are particular brands that you would like to work with, you've got a kit of information about your site that you can send to them, and you can get a conversation started with them, you know, that can then lead into a sponsored post for advertising or something like that. And I would say, have confidence that you have a great blog, that you have a readership, um, people are enjoying what you're writing about, so have confidence to approach brands and represent yourself well. I love that, and I mean it's true, you already have a proven track record and you know, you know what you like, and likely that's what your readers like because that's what you've been reading about, you've been writing about. What about you, Matt? What do you think? Um, what I look for and the best advice I could give is be well diversified across all of your social media channels. Mm -hmm. It's not just a blog anymore. If, if you're a what we call a purist and you do want to just write about your life for your family every day and that's your outlet and your passion, that's fantastic. If you are trying to monetize, then you should also be on Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter every day. And no matter if you call yourself a journalist, a writer, a blogger, everyone is in sales and marketing in some way, shape, or form. And those other channels will help drive more traffic. And the end goal is they read your content. You're not doing it to drive them to the, the 125 by 125 ad on the sidebar. You're driving them to read so then they become engaged followers and will stay with you long term. Then you will see the volume will drive the monetization. Yeah, I think you got something there and I think it all comes down to, you know, really stick with what you're writing about and what you're good at and what you love and that's when I think it becomes less about, you know, selling things and more about, hey, this has worked really well for me and um, people are usually really interested in that because that's why they're there in the first place. So, thank you guys so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it and um, each Wednesday morning at 10.30 Central um, time, I do something about blog related and that kind of stuff. If you have anything that you want to ask for future ones, please just add it to the comments. I check those all the time. So thanks, Kathy, and thanks, Matt. Matt, I really appreciate it. And we'll see you all later. Bye.